Hi. Hi, everyone. I think it's uh, probably about time to get back to our program so we can all finish and have lunch. So uh, here I am. I think this is picking me up okay. So, yes? Volume, good, bad? Okay, thanks. Uh, so, hi, I'm Seth, uh, and today I'm going to talk about building and distributing the Collide Launcher. Um, so a bit about the problems we have that sort of led to this path and why we do it and how we approach that. Uh, this is me. You know, I'm an SRE and infrastructure for Collide, uh, OS Query community member. You all probably see me online and around. Um, I've been at Fastly, Twitter, and ActBlue, as well as other places, and uh, hang out around infrastructure as code and thinking about simplification and stuff like that. So what are we doing? Uh, well, Collide is a company. We have open source things. Fleet and Launcher are the two. I think probably many people here are familiar with Fleet and Launcher. Uh, we also have a SaaS offering. Cloud was the last one. K2 is the new one, so it's pretty exciting. And one of the things we are really passionate about is making it simple to deploy user-focused security tools. Um, so, you know, what does simple mean? And to us, a lot of what it means is not surprising users. We want to follow the underlying platform norms. So it's really important to us to use native packages. We don't want to have people, you know, curl pipe bash to get stuff installed. Uh, we, want, we don't want someone to download an installer that then installs things. We don't want to download a zip file that then has like manual instructions. So we really want to use native packages for this. Um, we want to avoid security prompts. We don't want to tell the users, oh, yeah, 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 like download this thing and like click OK five times. Like it's cool, really. So we really try and sign all our binaries and our packages. And uh, it's, it's a journey for us. I'm still learning about it, but that's the goal. <laughs> um, we want to handle updates automatically. So, you know, one of the things Launcher does is it um, has auto update functionality. This helps us ensure current versions of Launcher and OS query across all the Collide fleets. Um, we also really want hosts to auto enroll. So there's sort of this uh, whole one, one click model, right? Download a package, install it, you're enrolled and done. That's it. Minimize user interaction, minimize user steps. Uh, so Launcher is a big part of how we achieve this. It's uh, our OS query endpoint software. It's written in Go. It wraps OS query. Um, we use it also as our extension, so it supplements OS query's data, and it integrates with the OS query with uh, native platform service management levels layers. So in Windows, it's a service, and you know Linux, it's like a System D plugin, and OS X, it's a launch daemon, things like that. Um, and it manages the auto update stuff. So as said, to make uh, deployment simple, we ship customer-specific packages. And the, the key to these is that they contain an enrollment secret. And that secret is coordinated with the server. This requires a lot of packages. So we've had about 2,000 signups so far. Um, and we make packages for each major platform, so four major platforms. And we build those for every launcher version and for every OS query version that we ship. So that means kind of every time there's a version upgrade, we build like 8,000 packages. Um, sort of, we, there's some shortcuts later on, but still a lot of packages to build. So what are our goals? You know, my goals are to build a lot of packages <laughs> and to minimize my own toil with this, to sort of cut down my oil toil, cut down my cognitive overhead you know, it's very hard for me to remember what got built when and what sort of special requests happened. So I don't want to, I can't remember any of that. Um, I want a faster release cycle. I want fewer bugs. So, you know, the more quickly we can iterate, less bugs we have. And I don't want to be fearful of releases. I don't want to be like, oh, did I, did I do this right? Am I going to ship something broken to the world? Um, I've done that. It never feels good. <laughs> so I don't, I don't like feeling that. I want our customers to be happy. I want them to have a great experience of you know, downloading an application, running it, and having it be great. So that's what we do. So how do we achieve that? And uh, there's sort of the tools I use and the automation around it. Um, we have an automation flow. K2 is our SaaS. It uh, has a cron job. It exports a builds file. And then we have various build workers that read the builds file, build the packages, shove them into a bucket. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Download flow is uh, here mostly to make the person contextualized. Uh, user says, hey, SAS, give me a package. 
checks the bucket, generates a signed URL, returns it. Pretty straightforward, not very exciting. So if we want to dig into how this actual build works for us, it's made up of uh, a bunch of underlying tools. And uh, most of these are open source. Um, and we'll sort of talk a bit about package kit and package builder in a few minutes. Uh, but package kit is the set of tools that I use to build packages. So it, they have uh, sort of libraries to handle uh, MSI building, RPM building, Debian building, PKG building, libraries to handle rendering init templates for most major init systems. So it, it's a very, uh, it's designed to be pretty product agnostic and it's open source. So uh, if someone else wants to go play with that, I'd be psyched. <laughs> and uh, Launcher has a package packaging which is the launcher-specific parts around PackageKit. And then on top of that is Package Builder, which uh, I know at least some people out there use because sometimes I get questions on Slack. And Package Builder sort of wraps all of this to build a launcher OS query package. Um, KWorker is an internal tool I use, which is sort of it's like a big wrapper around Package Builder. So it says, oh, you want to build packages for these 100 clients? Cool, does it. Um, Packages are pretty messy under the hood. They shouldn't be, but the, somehow they are. Um, ultimately, packages are trying to put files onto disk, and uh, a lot of packaging tools are built with the idea that you have an installation directory, you bundle it up, you zip it, you tar it, whatever, and then you have your package. Scripts, you know, pre-install, post-install, run this daemon, usually show up as metadata, and then init systems are their own you know, ball of wax, like what's a systemd unit file look like versus an Ubuntu init D script or upstart script or, again, Windows is its own weird thing. Uh, Windows is like extra weird because there's no files and MSI is actually like this weird database of objects that gets carried along. So uh, sort of marrying these ideas and providing a unified interface was a fair bit of work, um, but it, it helps me because now I can it's very rapid for me to add another system or, again, have that confidence I need. So that's what package kit's doing. And then I said package builder is, is what's building all of this. It's based around the idea that we have platform init package triples. So things like Linux, systemd, RPM is a triple. We'll get back there in a moment. Um, package builder sits on top of package kit, which is mostly using OS native tooling and that makes it much simpler to do code signing. So you can't cross compile or you can't cross package between Windows and Mac OS right now. Windows has to run on Windows because that's where Wix runs and Mac OS has to run on Mac OS because that's where Package Builder runs. Um, Linux stuff is all coming in through Docker though so that you can kind of go wherever you're going. Um, it's got a lot of flags and these, are, these all translate into what Launcher uses. Uh, so if you wanted to say, you know, build a package that auto enrolls into some host, it would be a flag you'd pass through Package Builder. Uh, it's got a lot of flags. You don't really want to pay attention to that. Um, right now, it supports a bunch of targets. So these are sort of the, the three columns of targets we have, three different kinds there. Um, and they don't all make sense together. Like, you wouldn't really ever build a Darwin package with systemd in a tarball. Um, this is kind of the way things mostly make sense. Um, and yeah. Pretty straightforward. You get Darwin, LaunchD, PKG is usually all goes together. And Windows is going to be a service in an MSI. And then Linux is kind of this mess of stuff. So looks about like that. Lots of choices. Uh, I think I probably have a couple pending requests from uh, customers, too, to add a few more to this list. But it's easier now. Um, and you know, I have some demos of this, too. So it's kind of exciting. Um, so it's actually quite easy. Let's see, is that playing? It is playing. Great. So you can start by cloning a bare launcher repo uh, and then just building package kit. And it takes, this is a pre-recorded video, but it took probably, you know, like five minutes. So it's actually quite fast to build whatever you want to do. And uh, a chunk of the time in packaging is actually in downloading OS query. So what, what package builder is doing is it is downloading the stable OS query and launcher and then it smushes them into a package with uh, you know, whatever the flags are. These flags were uh, hostname is fleetexample.com and the role secret is one, two, three. So you know, certainly a great build there. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I know has tripped up a couple of people is package builder is distributed in the launcher repository 
but it is fetching the stable release launcher. So it's pulling it off of our notary servers. And um, this means you don't really have to build launcher to use package builder. They just come together in a Git repository. So if we wanted to take a look inside one of those packages, you know, you can uh, sort of expand out the RPM. And you'll see that we have the same, the same things, right? So ultimately what this is doing is it's creating a couple of files. You see the systemd extension in there, launcher, launcher service. And you see uh, the launcher flags file, which is uh, kind of all the options we specified at the beginning. And uh, if you specified more, they would translate through to there. So that's kind of the high level view of how that works. Um, there's some things I've learned along the way in doing this. Uh, one of them is to minimize needless builds, right? I said we have about 8,000 builds. Uh, we, we don't actually do that many. I, I won't build packages for someone whose trial has ended, you know, someone who signed up, tested it, and went away three months ago. They're done. We don't have to build them packages anymore. Uh, and we don't build packages if there are no changes is another thing. So we try and, try and actually minimize rebuilds. Um, but, you know, straightforward enough. <coughs> There's been a lot of things to learn about Windows. Um, it looks similar, but it's really different. As mentioned, packages aren't a collection of files. They're a database of entries that get merged in with the system database, which is still a very foreign idea to me, but that's how it works. Um, services are also really strange. On sort of Unix-derived systems, services are their daemons. You just run them, right? And they hang out in an init system. And usually they're not even daemons anymore. They're just things that run in the foreground. Services are not. I don't understand all of them, but they're basically run under the service manager. And they kind of hang out as like weird plugins. So like they're, they're not their own processes. They're just weird. Uh, so like trying to adapt to that is a little bit hard. Um, and auto-update is a lot harder on Windows. Uh, in POSIX, we run auto-updates by best just downloading it and then execing in place. So the old binary is replaced with the new running binary. There's no exec on Windows, so can't do that. You can't replace a running binary on disk, so you can't just drop the new one in place. And then on top of all of that, the Wix toolset doesn't expose all of the service restart options. So uh, it was a little tricky finding the right way to get auto-update on Windows running. It does work now, though, so that's pretty cool. Um, code signing has been another big, big topic for us. Um, certificate management is pretty weird. Uh, all the platforms have sort of different ways of managing certificates that are accessible through different means and different tools. Um, you know, on Mac OS X, the certificate management wants to come in through the keychain, and on Windows, it comes in through the, the certificate stores. The certificate stores aren't accessible in all of the ways you you might think. So, on Windows, I can't access the certificate stores via um, if I'm on an SSH connection. I can only get to it on an RDP connection. So there's like, I don't know, it's just weird. There's a lot of like little gotchas that you find and you fix and you go forward. Um, Windows is also now reputation based. So having a signing cert is not enough to avoid uh, the smart screen prompts. You have to have built reputation. Unless you have an EV cert. But EV certs are generally only shipped on hardware. So if you wanted to run your builds remotely or in a cloud somewhere, it's a problem you solve, right? Like the vendors want to say, here's a thumb drive. What are you, you going to do with a thumb drive? <laughs> so yeah, that's been fun. Um, I've done a lot of this in Go, and I found Go to be a really sort of great tool. Supports MVPs really well. It lets me start small and iterate. It's got really good error handling. So you know, I, I come from Bash, and Writing a lot of these things in Bash means these huge amounts of like, if error, do this, try and figure out what error. Go just does that a lot better for me. Um, it's got a really good test framework, and it's got type safety. And that kind of lets me say, oh, this compiled. Great. It'll build happy packages. So that's been fun. And uh, yeah, that's sort of package building in a nutshell. I don't know if people have questions. <laughs> Since you build so many packages, how do you deal with the notarization on Mac packages? Submit every single one of them? Uh, so the question is, how do I deal with notarization on Mac packages? And the uh, embarrassing answer is, I haven't yet. Um, Maybe talk about some ideas later. What I expect to do as much as I sign every package, I expect I will notarize every Mac package. Um, but we don't have kernel extensions, so it's, I don't know if we'll need to yet. 
it's kind of a coming thing that we haven't, it's in my to-do list. There's a, there's a launcher bug for it. <laughs> Is it possible to package launcher with specific versions of OS3 or even OSQL? Uh, the question is, is it possible to package launcher with specific versions of OS Query or OSQL? Uh, yes. So the commands to build package builder let you specify what OS Query to include. Um, and your choices are the uh, named collide update channels or a path on disk. So you could actually just package whatever you wanted. Um, I don't know that Launcher and OSQL will work together right now just because of uh, like binary path names. So OSQL, I think, is still distributing as OSQL, not OSQuery. But uh, it shouldn't be hard to make that work. I just haven't ever tested it. Other folks? Going? OK, well, y'all are also welcome to hit me up inside Launcher, on Slack, whatever. There's a doc there, contains most of the same stuff. And uh, yeah, package building. <laughs>